What's up guys, you're watching Life by TCG. Uh, been quite a while since my last upload. A lot of things have happened in the meantime. So there was uh, Nationals and GP Singapore. Um, I played Blue White Cycling and Standard in both of those events. Um, I did quite badly at the GP. I didn't make day two. Uh, then I x one the PTQ on the second day. So because those events are basically single elim, not good enough to top 8, but I, at least I got a box out of it, so it wasn't too bad. Then at Nationals, I played cycling again. Um, I made a f slight few changes, um, which I thought were good. But anyway, that doesn't really matter now, because uh, it's a new format. Uh, and then I made it to Day 2 on X2, and then uh, I lost in the second draft, so I was out. Um, but today uh, is a pauper video, so the the title of the video is something about Enchantress, I'll make sure I s sort that out when I upload it. Um, so of course Argothian Enchantress uh, is a rare, and Enchantress's presence is also a rare. So how do we play Enchantress in pauper? Um, well before I continue I have to point out that I've moved house, and the recording setup, i.e. where I'm balancing my phone as it's recording this, uh, I have to do this upside down, so if I do the cards the wrong way, I forget, that's my bad, but I'll try and make sure they're the right way up for you guys. So, this is the Enchantress. We've got four Yapamaya Enchantress, um, and four Aura Nalid. So, the question will be, um, why not? If we're gonna like, obviously, how these cards work is they attack, they become big creatures and attack for a lot of damage when you play a bunch of enchantments, or specifically auras in the case of Aura Nalid. So the question then is, well, there's already a well-known deck that does a similar thing, right? Boggles, or Boggles. Uh, which is also a deck in Pauper as well as Modern because Glade Cover Scout and Silhana Ledge Walker and Slippery Bogle are all commons so if if we can do that um, what would be the reason to play these instead? and the answer is that um, because Bogles is like a known quantity um, people are like sort of prepared for it so um, uh, Chainer's Edict is one of the most popular removal spells in Pauper. Um, and Dalva players will have like Electricery in their sideboards. Um, a lot of the black decks are playing like Crip Rats, Type Effects, or Pestilence. Um, and these all make it like very difficult to win with Boggles. Um, if you don't get like a very good start, um, it becomes like, like very possible um, for either to easily get like two or three for one if they kill your guy with an aura on it or um, your, your opponent will just have like crit rats in play for example and if that if that ever happens then like there's no way you're ever putting a aura on a bogle right they're just going to activate it in response um, so being able to have large creatures that don't require a commitment to those creatures themselves is um, you know that's a, a beneficial um, aspect to the deck compared to Boggles, but you still have all the strengths of Boggles, right? You can have like a very fast, large attacker, um, because a lot of the targeted removal in Pauper anyway is just burn spells. Um, obviously, like Path to Exile and Salt to Plowshares don't exist in the format. Doomblade exists, but it's not super popular. Um, so yeah, so and then there's like Journey to Nowhere, but the a lot of the top decks are like Blue Red Delva and uh, Boros Monarch, uh, and these decks like heavily rely on burn spells. And when your creatures are just like six six or bigger by default, um, then they can't really be killed by burn anyway. So they're like pseudo hexproof in that sense already. Um, so yeah, so that's the inst 
that's where we're coming from for this deck. Uh, it's it's like a slightly different Vogels. So if these are the Enchantress, uh, what what is the Enchantress's presence, right? Where are we putting? If we're not putting the auras or the enchantments on these creatures, um, where are they going? And the answer is of course on the lands. So rather than Enchantress's presence, we have four Nylea's presence and four Abundant Growth. So um, these add one power to your Enchantress Enchantresses and they draw a card. Um, and they also fix your mana. So it's good to play these. And then in addition, we also have four Wild Growth and four Utopia Sprawl. Um, so these help accelerate your mana, get those fast starts, uh, so you can be aggressive versus decks like Tron or um, uh, some control decks that will like take over the late game if you give them enough time. So these are all auras, so they all pump the aura nalid. Um It's very easy to have like a bunch of these in play and for your enchantresses to just be like 8-8 eight, eight or around that size. Um, so, yep. So as I'm going through this, what I will say is that uh, I got the idea for this deck from a few uh, five O lists from leagues on Magic Online, um, and those were slightly different. So of course they played um, all eight of these enchantresses, and I think they played a few less of these. Like they cut one Wild Growth and one Nylea's Presence. Um, so of course, playing so many of the same effect, you might. Uh, it's a little bit difficult to decide what's the correct number, um, so I might talk about that towards the end of the video. So if we have all these auras that target the lands, um, do we have any other auras that we are playing as well? Uh, maybe they do some more interesting things, and the answer is of course yes we do. So we have two removal auras. Two pump auras, two lifelink auras. Uh, let me just check that this is still all in the frame. Yep. Okay. Um, and then three tricky auras. So, like, there are already some decks that can't remove um, a enchantress, like a 5-5 five, five or a six, 6 creature, they just find that really really difficult to, to do. Um, so at that point, the only way to win the game is by racing you. And if you put Ar Armadillo Cloak on your guy, then they can never win a race because you're just gaining like 8 to 10 life per turn while hitting them for the same amount. Um, this is just one of the most powerful auras you can put on a creature. Of course Daybreak Coronet isn't legal in Pauper, so this is like the next best thing that we have access to. Lifelink just does what it says on the card, gives one guy lifelink. Um, ethereal Armor and Ancestral Mask. Um, these just make your guy really big. Uh, sometimes you just want to race. Um, and these are the fastest things. They just give you the most power um, for one aura. Then for removal, so Immolation, um, it's like a red dead weight. Enchanted creature gets plus two, minus two. Um, so, in matchups where your opponents aren't playing small creatures, um, it's basically just like a rancor for one of your attackers. Um, and then, otherwise, it's like a very efficient way to kill uh, Delver of Secrets or something like that, like a Ninja of the Devours. Uh, one hobble. So, when it comes to play, draw a card. Um, enchanted creature can't attack, can't enchanted creature can't block if it's black. So this is just sort of like a cantrip doom blade um, in the matchups where your opponent's trying to race you. So that's uh, quite powerful as well. And then one curse of the pierced heart. 
So uh, this is an aura that you can put on the opponent. It's like a threat that's not dependent on a creature. Because a lot of the time you'll be in a situation where like you will expect your opponent has an instant speed removal spell, like a Doomblade or a Terminate or whatever. Um, so you, you just know that like if you search out like Ancestral Mask for example when you try and put it on something, um, the, they'll just kill the thing in response and you just wasted it. So uh, because the Pierce Heart is a good option, it's uh, like a threat that's not dependent on having, having a creature and it's just a reliable way to deal like the last few points of damage. Um, especially because against the the matchups where your opponents do have a lot of removal, um, those decks will be generally like quite slow. So you'll have a few turns for this to uh, really start adding up. Then one Talons of Wildwood. Um, this card is sort of like a new Rancor from M19. Um, Enchanted Creature gets plus one plus one and you can pay 3 mana to bring this back from your graveyard. So it's just a way to give um, you have a Maya Enchantress Evasion that uh, is free, basically, because if you if your Enchantress dies, you can bring it back and put it on the next thing. Um, and the return ability is like a mini combo with this. So this is one piece of technology that I've come up with, Tin Street Market. Um, 5 mana, which is quite expensive. And then Enchanted Land gains um, Rummaging Goblin's ability. So you tap the Enchanted Land and you discard a card and then you draw a card. So that's like a combo with this. Because you return this and then you discard it, draw a card and then you can keep returning it back again. So it's like a uh, Howling Mine just for you. But even without the combo, um, because once you have 5 mana, you are you can cast, you can do everything in your deck at that point basically anyway. So uh, if you're drawing lands or like wild growths, they're basically unnecessary and you would want to just uh, cycle them away. So this this card I've actually found is gives like the deck a bit of a late game boost that it's otherwise lacking. Um, so in, in case it wasn't obvious like why I'm playing so many random one ofs is because the deck also has four Heliod's Pilgrims. Um, some some lists didn't play all four, they only played like two or three. Um, and you'll see why I play all four in a second. But uh, yeah, this is why we're playing so many different uh, options. And it's also the reason why the um, mana cost of these is like split. So say, say you really want like, life, like a lifelink effect because you're racing. Um, like obviously this one is the more powerful one but if you want to play this search for this and play that if you want to play a pilgrim uh, search for armadillo cloak and play armadillo cloak all in the same turn that costs you six mana so like there are a lot of situations where you really need to gain like, like one attack worth of life um, right away and you don't have six mana so you just play Heliod's pilgrim um, get lifelink instead and like while it's not as strong as armadillo look like it's uh, like good enough in many situations that you want to have access to both options and it's the same idea for these two and for ethereal armor and uh ancestral mask and for hobble versus immolation like in the ideal world you'd be able to get the more powerful one every time but uh, you, you just don't have that luxury uh, in many situations. You, like, you just have to get the one mana one and play it right away. Um, also, while I've got all these like red auras here, I just remind you that all of the mana auras, I mean all of the land auras, like Abundant Growth, Annihilator's Presence, um, and Utopia Scroll can fix your, the mana for these because the deck doesn't have any red lands. Um, so yeah, that's a bit about Helios Pilgrim, and Helios Pilgrim can also find like an abundant growth uh, in some situations. If you want to do that? Uh, it's not too common, but it's uh, worth rem remembering. So yep.
uh, and in the last spells, uh, also my own technology. So when I first started testing this deck, uh, there were two problems that I found with it after I was testing the version from online. Um, so there are a few problems. Firstly, uh, I felt the deck was too light on threats. Like you, you only have eight win conditions. Um, And you know some decks, some control decks obviously don't even have that many, um, but also your deck has no removal, so like you have no way to like get into the late game and find another threat and keep going. Like a lot of the time, because the, the the list, the original list that I tested, which is by a guy, I think his online username is like Jose Prio. Um, he played way more auras than these, especially auras that target creatures. Like, he wasn't playing any of these, or these five, basically, right? And But instead he was playing four Rancor and four Ethereal Armor. Um, and what I found happened was that just like, your, your creatures would die, and then you'd just be stuck in hand with like a ton of pump auras and you would just lose because you couldn't um, like re replay another threat again. Um, so that was the first thing, like you had too many auras and not enough threats. So you just lost some games because of how that t uh, played out. And the other thing was that all of your threats cost 3 mana. So there were times when like you would play you have a Maya Enchantress, and they would counterspell it, and then you'd want to follow it up with like another Aura Mallard, but you had to wait another turn, because all of your threats are so expensive, like 3 mana is quite a lot in a format that's efficient as Pauper. So, like that was a drawback as well, like all of your threats cost 3 mana, um, so you couldn't like de deploy 2 threats in one turn. And the other thing about that expensive mana issue was that like if you were cantripping through your deck with like Nylea's Presence and um, Abundant Growth, those will also eat your mana. So if you pay, if you cast a Nylea's Presence and you draw it into, you have a Maya Entrances, maybe you don't have enough mana to play it that turn, you have to wait for the next turn, and this is slowing the deck down a lot. So, um, but what, what are we supposed to do about that, right? Like there are no more legal cards like this, we're already playing 8 uh, Enchantresses and there are, there's no more cards with this effect, so what can we do? So the answer that I found was to play 4 Unearth, um, which solves like all of the above problems basically, right? Like now we have artificially 12 threats rather than only 8, um, and if we have one of these in the graveyard, then we have a, only a one mana version of these threat. <laughs> what, what is my grammar today? We have a version of these threats that only costs one mana. So it's easy to play like two in one turn or to like redeploy one after it gets uh, killed or countered. So um, that was really good. And also you have another hit three drop, and not only a threat but in the form of Heliod's Pilgrim. That um, can be quite good to search for these as well or to, rather to return these with Unearth. And then in any situation where Unearth is bad, um, you can just cycle it. So if you haven't found one of your threats yet, then it helps you dig through your deck uh, so you can draw one. So uh, I just thought, I thought it uh, was a good idea and in testing, like overall I found that the this configuration worked quite well. Um, So yeah, that's all the spells. Um, I'll, I'll just talk about the lands and then some brief things that you could try um, in the future or sh that should be thought about. So I just copied the exact mana base from the guys, the online list, which is probably not correct because I've changed so many things, but it works out well enough uh, as is. So uh, how many forests is this? 12? 4, 4, 4, yep, 12 forests. 
um, three planes and four county garden. So when I was initially testing the deck, I thought that maybe um, one of these planes should be either a green white jewel land, like the game on life land, or a shimmering grotto. Um, and then I wasn't sure if all four county gardens was necessary. So the reason why county garden is good in this deck um, is firstly because it protects your creatures from edict effects because you can just sacrifice the token and also it gives you another body that you can put like ancestral mask on for example um, so yeah so that's the the mana base so um, yeah so so the parts of the deck that I like uh, the I'll just move these away first the parts of the deck that I like uh, the the threat base because the the most popular deck in Pauper right now is Blue Red Delver and it just has so much difficulty killing any of these once they resolve um, and then like it's already hard enough for them to race Yabamaya and Chancer by itself and then if you give it lifelink it's just impossible for them to ever win um, and then with the utility of the four pilgrims and the idea of the four unearth um, I think this is like a really sweet setup um, it just makes the deck like flow so much better compared to not having unearth and having way more auras. Um, so yeah, like this, these sixteen cards I think work really well together. Then the random auras. So Tin Street Market uh, overperformed. That I mean, it looked like a really stupid fun of idea um, but um, it, it, you know all the reasons why I said it I thought it would be good uh, turned out that it actually does work quite well um, just as like making sure you don't flood um, and like the this this is quite difficult to assemble but like having that angle in slow matchups is quite useful um, this is arguably better than Rancor anyway, because you can always return it. You don't have to worry about um, casting it on the thing and then them killing it in response. The idea of um, splitting these based on mana costs worked, um, I thought was a good idea. So, I, th I still think you want both of these, and you want Immolation and something like this. Um, it's possible that Kurtar's Desire or Crystallization might be better than Hobble, but I have been liking Hobble. Um, or you can play, like in addition to both of these, you can play another removed spell, that would, be, that would also be fine. Um, Ancestral Mask I think is one of the weakest auras in the deck. Like it's just such overkill. Um, like paying 3 mana for like infinite damage um, a lot of the times it's worse than armadillo cloak or ethereal armor like it's just it's very hard to find a situation where it's better than either of those cards um, I th so like ancestral mask I would say is the worst out of all of these auras and then curse of the pierce heart is like a quite it's quite a good idea like it's a very unique thing that it does, but I'm not sure if it's worth the slot. Um, it's quite slow, and um, yeah, like I do. I wish there was something else that was like a threat that wasn't dependent on a creature. The you can play something like Vastwood Zendikon, which is a five mana aura 
Um, enchanted land is a six four creature, and when it dies, you return the land to your hand. So that that like creates a threat. Um, in a way that like you don't necessarily get two for one if they have Doomblade, but it's still a thing that dies to Doomblade. So this needs more testing to decide whether this is worth it or not. Um, but like overall, this setup, I was actually quite surprised that like it seems to cover all of the angles that you're worried about. Um, but the, the, the thing I'm sort of not sure about is playing all of these. So, the deck already has like 19 lands. You've already seen the 19 lands. Um, so, but it's like an aggressive deck that the curve basically ends at 3, except for 10 Street Market. Um, so, 19 lands is sort of like the minimum you can afford to play um, just so you can actually cast spells on turn one but like you have 19 lands and then you also have eight of these four wild growth and four utopia sprawl, sprawl. so 19 lands plus eight of these you, that's 27 cards that are just mana sources and then on top of that, you have eight cantrips. So, like, you can't play, you don't want to play more lands necessarily. Because, like, like if you're cutting, you can't cut these for lands. Like, you're already playing, like, the minimum number. So you, yeah, so, so you're already kind of playing like the maximum number of lands. And like you have to play these to give your Enchantresses power. But like because now because your deck has like so many mana sources and so many um, cantrips, like you it just inevitably you kind of flood out a lot. Um, If, like the game goes late and I'm not quite sure like a is that a real problem and B like how do you solve it um, so yeah so like everything else seems to be relatively straightforward like playing four of every enchantress and four of the children four on earth like that that seems like relatively fine but I feel like tuning up this like this element of the deck and um, the the mana base um, that I think is the part of the deck that needs the should it's the part of the deck that deserves the most attention just figuring out like the exact number of cantrips and mana sources and everything that you uh, should play so you can curve out properly but not flood uh, so yeah it was a uh, pretty interesting uh, fun experience testing this deck. Um, not the kind of deck that I normally play in Pauper. Because um, generally I would say that like I'm more of a control player. But it is it is fun to like have the enchantress creatures in play and like count up your whole board and attack with like a 10 power guy. Um, it's a bit like cranial plating in modern which is a, obviously a card that I enjoy as well. So I, de I definitely think this deck has some potential. Um, I don't really have much ideas for sideboard cards, so I have I have two cards here. So I have Curse of the Bloody Tome and uh, Crown of Suspicion. So this is like a tutorable aura that gives every creature of the same type minus one toughness. So I'm in my head this is like an anti-elves card. And then this is like a win condition aura that's not dependent on creatures. So maybe you play a few of these in the sideboard, and then in control matchups, you like to de-emphasize attacking uh, a lot, and then you have have this as like more of a plan A maybe. Um, but apart from that, I'm not really too sure what you would sideboard. So uh, maybe negate if you're afraid of 
Serene Heart, or um, Serene Heart, is that what it's called? The, the incident that destroys all auras. Um, otherwise, um, what's that called? Quiet Disrepair is probably good as like a tutorable naturalize. Um, and also as like an extra source of life gain versus burn. Um, yeah, like the fact that the land auras give you access to all five colors potentially means you have a lot of options for the sideboard. But I haven't really thought about those too much yet. So yeah, um, just something a bit different this week. I hope you enjoyed that video. I don't know if I'd say this is like a 100% tier 1 deck, but at least it feels like it could be as good as um, Boggles or like one of those other fringe players. So if you want to give this a try, remember it's Pauper, it's very cheap. Um, <laughs> I still can't find one Heliod's Pilgrim though for some reason. But yeah, that's all for this week. Um, if you have any questions about this, or if, I don't know, what else would you want to know about? Oh, Legacy actually, Legacy, big shake up, Rug, we're going to make Rug great again, that might be the next video. Alright, Life ITCG, uh, signing up.